Hello all, welcome to The Truth Show, and in this video, I will be talking about the life of John Witherspoon. Now, you all know, I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Here we go again. I mean, this is The Truth Show, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is The Truth Show. Oh, yes. John Weatherspoon. Yes, his name is spelt and pronounced differently. He later changed his name after one of his siblings. He was born on January 27, 1942 in Detroit, Michigan. I could not find too much about his childhood or his parents because no one thought to ask him about this, I'm, I'm assuming. If you are able to find one, just put the link below, okay? I'll pin it. Anyway, when and if I do find anything though, anything else about his life i will definitely post it okay i'll post it on my blog however you can find the link to my blogs and my other um platforms as well in my description box you might want to take a look at that getting back to this um, bio here witherspoon had an elder brother who was a songwriter for motown records who wrote the song what becomes of the broken hearted then he also had a sibling who was a director of the PBS TV network, Channel 56 in Detroit, for almost four decades. Then he had a sister named Gertrude Stacks, who was a pastor of Shalom Fellowship International Church in Detroit. Oh, yes. It seems underneath the comedy, Weatherspoon was a huge music lover. He even played the trumpet and the French horn, modeled a little while as well. It was during the modeling days he started doing comedy. He even gained some famous friends during this time, such as Tim Reed, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Jay Leno, and David Letterman while working on WKRP in Cincinnati and on the Richard Pryor show. Oh yes, his first television appearance was in Barnaby Jones, Good Times what's happening fast forwarding years later here he had played in tv series as well um, the wayne and brothers house party and later he was he also starred in many hit movies such as friday next friday i'm gonna get you sucker boomerang and many more after that so on and so forth with his main korean endeavors okay i have to stop for just one second i want you all to know that it doesn't stop here I have a lot of neat things going on. Did you all know I have three other channels? One being my sister's channel. Oh, yes. I have The Truth Show, as you all should know. Keisha's Gossip and Truth. The Truth Show Deluxe. My sister's Top T and Five or Six. And that's not all. You can visit my website at thetruthshow.co. This website gives you inside information and more. Or become a patron for only $2. Or sign up for my YouTube membership for a dollar more and get access to that and more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I have a blog. So you can read all of my latest and popular scripts in detail. Oh, I'm still not done yet. If you like my videos and you want me to make you one, whatever it may be, well, visit Freezing Moments in Time website and submit your request and we can talk, honey. Everything is below. And now let's get. Winterspoon was married to Angela Robinson since 1988 and they had two children together. He was hardly ever seen without his wedding ring and often wore it for his characters in movies. He has even starred alongside his wife in the movie Soul Plane. He had hated taking his ring off. He was also involved in many organizations and causes. His son is a YouTuber and I may have chatted with him via direct message or email at some point. I chatted with a lot of people who had no idea who they were. Um, yeah, he has made several videos about his father and they got many views. Witherspoon himself had even uploaded a cooking video on YouTube before his death. Witherspoon never followed a diet. He ate what he wanted. He also did not like Trump policies as well. You see, Witherspoon was in his 20s during the civil rights. He was even reported to have marched at some point. He's been through the segregated times, Studio 54, the cocaine and heroin moments with Richard Pryor and Robin Williams and sex parties with Aretha Franklin's father. No word if he partaken in any of it though. However, it was reported that he might have cheated on his wife a few times. But remember in those days, and understand those days include the 80s, because women then were taught by wives from the 50s and 60s to turn the other cheek to these actions from men, you know, infidelity, adultery, and things of that nature. Please note, there's not any proof of any of his transgressions, just his name being dropped by many sources of that time. 
However, we can say that he strived through it and managed to outlive them all. He and his wife were blissfully happy until the end of the day. John Witherspoon was accused of helping his wife screw over her friend by taking control of a fam about a man's life, which he claims has caused him to suffer bouts of depression and extreme weight loss. According to court documents obtained by The Blast, Ronald Grant is suing the 77-year-old actor and his wife, Angela Robinson Ritherspoon, over a film entitled Curtsy Mister. Ronald says he has been long-time acquaintances with Angela and the two agreed to make a short film based on a play written by Grant. The play was Grant's memoir and specific periods of sexual abuse and addiction along with chronicle his rise from the housing projects of Manhattan to become the fashion editor of Essence magazine. Oh yes, he claims the deal was for him to have a complete control over the final edit of the film. They shot the film back in 2015. Grant said he paid $2,500 to cover production costs and had to step in to direct after Angela went absent for hours. The suit accuses Angela of taking the footage and then refusing to let Grant see it or have control over the final edit. He accuses her of entering the film into numerous festivals since being completed without his consent. He states on or about November 16, 2016, Defendant Robinson Ritherspoon screened Curtsy Mister for the first time in New York. This was the first time Mr. Grant had been allowed to view Curtsy Mister. He was not permitted to participate in the editing of the film that was screened in New York, nor was he permitted to approve Curtsy Mister before the screening in violation of the agreement. Mm -hmm. At that point, he claims to have learned Angela betrayed her promises and cut Mr. Grant out of the editing process. He claims she hired her own editor and partner with her husband production company, T. Boyd's Boy Productions. Grant says as a result of the situation, he continues to suffer bouts of depression by despair about finite sharing of intimate details of his life without his consent, his feelings of powerlessness to stop them, and the shame and embarrassment he has been caused. Mr. Grant depression has manifested in physical symptoms such as insomnia, extreme weight loss, and struggle to remain sober. At times, Mr. Grant's friends have approached him to comment on the film, assuming that Mr. Grant was involved in its production. Mr. Grant has been the subject of unkind and crude comments as well about his childhood by the viewers of the film. He claims he had hoped that he could use the film as a backdrop to help the LGBT youth, but defendant Robinson Ritherspoon has tainted Mr. Grant's story and consequently any ability for Mr. Grant to pursue his goal of using the film in this manner. Grant is suing for an injunction against John and his wife from continuing to profit off the film and for unspecified damages. These accusations came before Ritherspoon was announced dead. This morning, we are remembering one of Detroit's own, John Witherspoon. Yeah, let's send things over to Jason, joining us in studio now for a look back at the Detroit native's Hollywood career and the laughs that he gave us. He was so good with the air freshener in the Friday. <laughs> From getting his start on the Richard Pryor show to his most iconic role in the Friday film franchise, starring along Ice Cube, anyone in Hollywood will tell you John Witherspoon was one of a kind and always good for a laugh. Every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. In the refrigerator. Eating up all the food, all the chicken, all the pig feet. You ate my dinner. <laughs> 
I don't know. It's Tim Witherspoon started his stand-up comedy and acting career in the 70s and made his feature film debut in 1980s The Jazz Singer with Neil Diamond. He appeared in a variety of well-known movies and TV shows. More recently, he voiced the part of Granddad on the animated series The Boondocks and appeared on the Adult Swim show Black Jesus. His family says he died suddenly Tuesday at his home in California at the age of 77. Now, just last year, he stopped by Local 4 and shared some memories with Sean Lay about his life growing up in Detroit. Take a listen. I grew up right two or three miles away from here. Uh, two or three miles away from me. I went to Northwestern High School and I uh, graduated from Central High School. How about that? And yeah. plenty of brothers and sisters. We had 11 kids in our family. 11 kids? Yeah. I used, we, were, we were broke, though. We didn't have any money. So how did you get through that? It was tough. <laughs> we eat a chicken and eat a chicken and eat a chicken. The same chicken. <laughs> same chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we want to share some reactions from some who knew him best. Let's take a look here. Uh, Ice Cube, I'm devastated over the passing of John Witherspoon. Life won't be as funny without him. Uh, Regina King says, my dad, my grandpa, my comedic inspiration, I love you, Spoons. Rest in paradise, King. And Jay Farrow, my heart hurts so much right now. RIP to John Witherspoon. I appreciate our conversations and the wisdom you gave me as a young comic. We lost a real one today, and it'd be remiss to not say he was as irreplaceable and as invaluable an icon in the comedic community. Sleep easy. Uh, Marlon Wayans, I'm sad, broken, hurt, yet extremely grateful to God that I got to spend five years of my life working with one of the funniest, sweetest, wisest, humblest, loving man at John Johnny Witherspoon. You were my TV dad and my mentor and my friend. I miss you already. Hashtag Wayans Brothers. And we invite you to share your thoughts as well on the Local 4 Facebook page. May he rest in peace. I'm gonna definitely miss seeing him in random movies and things of that nature. I wish I would have interviewed him when he was alive. I mean, I have so many questions about his era that time i would love to interview anyone from that time maybe i should interview diana ross i should make that my goal to interview diana ross get a raw interview from her anyway that's it tell me your thoughts below and love you all bye